Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video, I'll be showing how to use the Singleton design pattern in an Android application. I'll be going through why we need it, and then how to make it work with a very simple example. So, to start with, I've got the basics of an application laid out. Um, we're going to be doing a, a program that pops bubble wrap. So, for example, uh, you get the shipping bubble wrap, and you'll have to pop all the pops, all the bubbles. So, what's it going to look like? Well, we're going to have here a um, an application that's going to tell us how many bubbles are left. We're going to have the ability on our first activity to add some more bubbles, and we're going to have the ability to jump to a second activity to pop some bubbles. Um, this is a very toy example, but the whole idea is we're going to access a class, we're going to call it the model, that's going to store our data. In this case, just the number of bubbles left. In a more realistic case, it's your whole application logic. It's the state of a game, it's the configuration options for your system, uh, whatever your application is doing. So to get us started, I've got this application laid out. I'll kind of walk through it very briefly here. It's my main application or main activity. I've got in on create, I'm going to set up two buttons, my add more button and my pop activity button. So the add more button is going to well, I haven't put the code in yet, but we're going to add some more bubbles onto our existing bubble wrap. And then so we got the we find the view by ID for my button. And then I'm going to currently just update my UI, which I call way down here. Update UI is simply going to print something to the screen, and currently I'm printing a zero. We're going to fill that in in just a moment. We want to make this update UI function actually print to the screen the number of bubbles left inside of our model. When I press the pop activity button, we want it to launch a new activity. I don't yet have the code here, but we'll add a new activity and we'll launch that pretty quick. Uh, see some of my other videos for how to set up buttons and have multiple activities. So to start with, let's actually implement a bubble wrap class. So I'm going to put in here, I want a private field. I'm going to call it bubble wrap is my class type, and I'm going to call this one bubble wrap. Um, of course, it doesn't yet exist. I'm going to hit Alt Enter on it, and I'm going to create the class bubble wrap. I could put it into the current package, but instead I'm going to put it into one dot model. I'm going to create a new package so that I keep my model class, my data classes, separate than my um, UI classes. So here I've got it. I'm going to now uh, give it some data. What do I need to store? I want private int num bubbles, number of bubbles, and Let's create, yeah, that's probably a good start. Let's add in some accessory and setter functions. I'm going to say alt insert. I'm going to have a getter function for the number of bubbles. And public void add more bubbles. And let's say this is going to be num bubbles plus equals add more bubbles. Alt enter on that, and I'm going to create a uh, constant field. It's an int, and let's add, I don't know, let's add 20. Let's add 10. Okay, so I can get it, and I can add some more bubbles. So let's go back to my other code, my main activity, and see what I can do. Now I've got this. I need to instantiate one, so I could do it up top. I'm going to do it here just because it's going to fit better into my process later. Bubble wrap equals new bubble wrap. And that's good. Other things I need to do down here, when I click on the add more button, on my UI, I want to add more buttons to my bubble wrap, so I can say bubble wrap dot add more bubbles. And then finally down here, instead of printing out zero, I'm going to have it update my screen with bubble wrap dot get num bubbles. And let's drop that down to the next line too. I'm using uh, the string format, and let me just push this in here. String format, and I'm passing in the locale, so it kind of silences a warning, makes it a bit more international. And here, normally I'd pull this string into my uh, uh, a separate XML values file, strings file, but uh, for this example, this is fine. Okay, so let me run this application now. Switch back to my editor or my uh, emulator, and here's my program. I'm going to add some more bubbles, and we can see that I am continuously adding some more bubbles. I can't yet pop though, so that's what I want to do. Now. Let's sort of launch the sec bring in the second activity. So I'm going to click on my uh, my main package. I'm going to say new, and you want a new activity. And let's just go with an empty activity. I'm going to call this my pop activity. And 
I'm going to put on this one uh, a bubble, a button, some feedback stuff as well, but rather than me doing all that design right now, I'm going to copy and paste it from an existing version that I have. So I'm going to drop that in. Let's go back to the design just to see what it's going to look like. I'm going to display how many bubbles we've got, and I got a button called pop. When you click pop, it's going to do something. So this is my pop activity. I'm going to go look at my class, my code here, and inside of my pop activity, I'm going to replace this code. Oops. Let's click on the right things. Pop activity. I'm going to overwrite this with some code I've already got. So, um, what do I need to do here? So I've got another instance of, in this activity, I've got a reference to a thing, another bubble wrap object. Inside my onCreate, I instantiate it, and then I'm going to call, uh, set up this button, pop button, and I'm going to update my UI. Now, inside of here, we can see I've got, previously I named this differently, so let's actually call this get num bubbles. I don't yet have a pop bubble function, which I want to call when I click on the pop button, I'm going to pop some bubbles. So let's go inside there, I'm going to create the method. And when I pop a bubble, quite simply, that sounds good, I'm going to say num bubbles minus minus. So there is my my model. It's trivial at the moment, but it gives us the idea. So I come back to my pop activity, we see that it's going to, on my uh, bubble wrap object, I'm going to be allowed to pop the bubbles. So let's rerun that. I'm going to shift F10, switch back to my emulator. And now what we want to do is we kind of want to have one sheet of bubbles. Right here we're going to add some bubbles. We've got 20 bubbles. Let's go pop some bubbles. And wait, we haven't yet wired this up. Forgot to wire it up. So let's go back to our main activity. And we're going to wire it up. So here in the on click, I need to launch my new in, uh, activity. I have to do that with an intent. So intent, intent equals new intent. I need to give it a context, which is going to be my main activity dot this. And then I specify which class I want to launch, and that's going to be pop activity dot class. That builds me my intent, and then I'm going to say start activity with my intent. Okay, let's try that again. Shift F10 to run it. Okay, so I'm going to add some bubbles. We got 20 bubbles. Let's go pop them. We come here. We got no bubbles, and I don't count down. That's not very satisfying. I want to have this with the same number. Now we're at, four, we're at negative four bubbles. When I go back, I'd love this to be at uh, negative four bubbles. I want to be working on the same thing, but this is still at 20. What's going on is that each activity instantiates its own bubble wrap object. So each activity has its own reference to its own copy of the model completely separate. And that's not what we want. If we've got a single game that we're trying to play, we of course want to have one instance of the game that is maybe being shown on different activities. Or if we've got one uh, set of data, we want to reference that one set of data. We don't want to have multiple copies of it floating around. So the issue is, of course, that each activity is calling new bubbles, bubble wrap. So I don't want to do that anymore. I want to have some way of getting one instance of this. Now. A common hack would be for my main activity to instantiate it, and then somehow get access to it inside of pop activity. I could, I can't just pass it in an intent. I could serialize it and pass it across, but then I end up with a copy of it, which isn't so good either. So I want to hand a reference to it, and there's no good way to hand a reference across. I could make a public static function in my main activity to hand out the reference. But that's then tightly coupling my UI activities. So I don't want to do that either. I want to have some facility inside of my model that allows me to gain an instance, access to an instance of my model in both places. Um, I could make everything static in my model, which would allow me to just access things directly on this class. But then I can only ever have one instance of it, and I'm then kind of stuck in this sort of realm of static. And I want to have as few things static as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a singleton. So let's go through the code here. I'm going to uh, add a comment here to my code. This is the uh, normal object code. So this stuff down here at the bottom we see is the normal object code. I'm going to add in here singleton support. 
So to make it a singleton, what we want to do is we want to be able to have my bubble wrap class be able to hand back a reference to an object. So I'm going to make that function now. It's going to be public static, so that anyone can call it on the class, bubble wrap. And it's going to return a bubble wrap, and I'm going to call it get instance. Get instance is the, the, the name that is associated with this. So now I want to be able to hand back an instance of this bubble wrap. So I could do it, I could just make a new one. So return new bubble wrap. But that's no better because now everyone who calls this gets a new copy. I want everyone who calls this function to get but one copy. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to store a reference to it. So we make it private static bubble wrap field. I'm going to call it instance. Start off as being null. And then here I'm going to say if uh, instance is null, so I don't yet have anything, uh, instance, I'm going to say instance equals new bubble wrap. This is called lazy initialization. And then rather than doing this here, I'm going to say instance. So this is lazy initialization. When someone calls get instance, only then do I check, do we have one yet? No? OK, build me a new one, and then return it. So now, let's go back and change some. Well, the one last thing, just while I'm here, the one last thing I want to do is I want to prevent anyone from instantiating a bubble wrap class other than me. This will ensure that I only have one copy of a bubble wrap object in existence. The way to do that is make it a private constructor. So private bubble wrap. That's good enough. I'll say private to prevent anyone else from instantiating. So now we know that it's going to be the only copy of this object. So you have to call this get instance for it to work. So let's go back to main. Main now breaks because we can no longer instantiate a bubble wrap. But what I can do here is say, well, instead of doing that, I'm going to say on my bubble wrap class dot get instance. So by calling the get instance function, I am getting that one instance that the bubble wrap class has produced. And now the rest of my code should work just as before. Let's go make that same change to my pop activity. So here I can't instantiate it, but I can say bubble wrap get instance. And now I'm holding a reference to that. Critically, what has happened is now each of my activities is asking the bubble wrap class to give it an instance. And the bubble wrap class is handing both of them back the same instance. So let's see. This is the magic that makes it work. So none here. I'm going to add some bubbles. We're up to 20. Start popping. We're at 20. I call pop, pop, pop a few times, down to 17. I'm going to go back. It calls my on uh, restart, refresh, and uh, or resume rather, pardon me. And here now we're back to 17 bubbles. So it's showing that. I have the same object shared between two activities. And that's the critical part of what Singleton allows me to do inside of Android. Because each activity is a separate class, and each activity has its own life cycle. I need some way of sharing some data between them all. And my, uh, ins or my um, singleton is the way to do that. So the big key thing in singleton is I've got a static field that is a reference to my model, my bubble wrap here. And I have a static function that gives me access to that. And virtually nothing else is static. I mean, I've got some constants are static, but that's OK. All of my fields that are storing my actual data are non-static, and all of my methods that access this are non-static. This is a better way to do it than making everything static, because then you get in this sort of nightmare situation about having too many things that are static. OK, thank you very much for watching.